Hi everyone and thank you for watching Science at Home. My name is Michael Bonner and I am a fourth grade and sixth grade teacher at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, Georgia. And I must say, I am elated and excited because you have clicked on this video and we are gonna do an amazing experiment together on today. Now, if I'm honest, with me in my classroom, music is a must, whether it is in person or online. I love the way that music can shift the energy in the room. It can tug at your emotions. It can bring laughter and joy inside the environment. And that is the most beautiful thing to me. And what makes it even cool is Mr. Bonner incorporated music so much inside of his classroom that even Ellen DeGeneres invited me and my students to her show. So I think we're gonna have a good time today as we begin to figure out how can we build a rubber band guitar from everyday materials that you use at home. I hope you're excited because I am. Have you ever wondered how guitars make music? Sound travels as sound waves, which are vibrations in the air we perceive as sound. These waves are generated by vibration or the movement of an object. When a guitarist plucks a guitar string, it vibrates at a specific frequency, which determines the pitch of the sound we hear. For example, faster vibrations produce higher pitch sounds. In today's activity, you'll build your own guitar and explore how frequency can change the pitch of the sound that you hear. Are you ready? It's time to tune up. Now, what I have in front of me are the materials, but before we even get to the materials, I need you to understand that safety is our main priority, all right? You'll often see scientists wearing gloves and safety glasses, especially when dealing with volatile chemicals and extreme temperatures. Since we're working with generally safe materials here, I don't think we'll need gloves, but I'll always have my safety glasses on, all right? And make sure you have an adult on hand to help out. Make it a family cool activity that you can do together and see who can create the best guitar, okay? Let's go over our materials really quickly. Right here, we have a tissue box and you can pick these up anywhere. As you can see, Mr. Bonner had to pull the tissue out um, because you wanna need this area here when it comes down to hearing the sound from your guitar. A very simple paper towel roll. You can definitely get this or don't throw it away, save it, recycle it. Popsicle sticks, which are important. Now, the bigger they are, the better it will be. Mr. Bonner has been eating a lot of popsicles and all I had was the miniature ones, but you will find out that these work just as well. Scissors, okay, because when we're time to construct our guitar, you can have different types of tape. Mr. Bonner has masking tape here or clear tape. Whichever one you would like to use, just make sure that you use enough to hold down the actual stem to the tissue box when it's time. You'll need some type of glue for the sticks, rubber bands, all right? You need as many different sizes as you possibly can get. Now that we have our materials, now that you understand that sound is caused by the vibration or movement of an object, let's get started with building our guitar. Once you have your tissue box, I need you to make sure that you take all of the tissue out of the box, okay? And we're gonna remove the plastic from inside of the tissue box. When it comes to sound, we know that they are invisible sound waves that are moving and it needs as much space as possible and this plastic will stop that. So, Mr. Barnes wanna simply take the plastic out and set it to the side because we wanna make sure that we recycle these items properly at the end of our experiment. And as I'm here, this is getting me really excited because I love music so much. Salsa, R&B, hip hop, rock and roll. The electric guitar is actually my favorite instrument in the world. All right, so now as you can see, I have the plastic removed from the tissue box. All right, as much as possible. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna need your paper towel stem. Okay, now what you need to make sure that you do is you're going to cut about four slits about an inch wide into the paper towel so it can fit and spread on the end of this particular tissue box, okay? So I will show you, I'm gonna do it just like this, okay? And as you notice, all I'm simply doing is cutting little flaps here, okay? So it will be able to stick at the end of the tissue box. Now, this is gonna be good because you want your guitar to be steady. Specifically, if you plan on playing it like Mr. Bond is gonna do with my nephews and them when they come to town in Atlanta. So I'm sitting here and I'm cutting about an inch 
probably an inch and a half into the paper towel roller. And I'm gonna set my scissors to the side for safety, right? And as you can see, it will look like this. Okay? Can you see that? Good, about an inch will do. Now, now that you have cut your paper towel roll, it is time to construct your guitar and put the pieces together, all right? So what I'm gonna do is you can take this type of clear tape or this uh, scotch tape and you are going to take the flap and hold it like this, okay? And you wanna simply make them flat and tape the pieces right here down to the box as much as possible. We're gonna put as much tape up there as possible. Now make sure that all the flaps are out towards the end like this, okay? So your guitar can be sturdy, all right? So what I wanna do is, let's use our minds here. What is a way that we can take the things easier to it? What do you think? For me, I'm going to probably tear off about six to seven pieces first so when it's time to tape it to the box, it makes it a little bit easier. You'll notice with scientists, they are always trying to find creative ways to not only help them save time, but to make sure that they do the experiment effectively. So that's two, three, four, five, six, and I think seven is a lucky number. Let's go into seven. Seven. So. Mr. Bonner has seven pieces of tape here, and I am going to go ahead and put my paper towel roll here on the edge of my box, okay? And now that I have done that, I am simply going to begin making sure, and I'm gonna cut a little split here. Scientists often troubleshoot, because let me show you something before we tape it. Notice how, as I was trying to put this here, it wouldn't go down flat all the way. Now, a scientist will problem shoot or problem solve and notice that, hey, I probably need to cut a deeper split right here so that it can fit flat. Because right now, as you notice, my guitar stem is leaning to the left. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. So Mr. Bond's gonna cut a little extra indent there so it can be even. And when it's time to even it out, it looks just like this, see? So now we're gonna take our tape <laughs> and we wanna tape this thing down as much as possible, okay? Now, I don't want you to worry about it looking cute and pretty right now. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later, okay? I'm sure with your people, you'll be able to decorate it and you'll be able to make it as pretty as you want. Notice how it's standing up already, look at that. And we wanna keep taping these pieces down all right, so that it can be equal and level, all right? Now, I'm personally going to put as much tape up there as possible because Mr. Bonner plans on rocking out to some music tonight, okay? So if you notice, I may even put a piece of tape right there, okay? I may even put a piece of tape right here, all right? And make sure the tape is flat down, okay? Now, as you can see, Mr. Bonner, <laughs> I have my guitar. We're getting there. Now, the next piece that we're gonna do is gonna be pretty important, okay? Now, the next part that we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that you wanna take your popsicle sticks, okay? And you want to glue them in a perpendicular direction, all right? And perpendicular will mean that it'll go just like this, okay? So I'll show you. We wanna glue the popsicle sticks down just like this, close to the edges, all right? Now, with the glue, this is a good time to make sure that you're being careful, you have your safety glasses on, and that you have an adult around just to make sure that you're doing this correctly, okay? So I'm gonna put my things to the side. Mr. Bonner's gonna actually pop the glue open. We're gonna make sure that it's open, and it is, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put the glue on this part and this part, and then lay it down, okay? I'm gonna put the glue on this part and this part and lay it down. So I wanna do little small dots, all right? I'm gonna show you really quickly, two small dots like this because we don't want it to fall off, but two small dots like that, all right? Now what I want to do is simply put them towards the edge, like I said. I'm gonna put it just like that, boom. 
Okay, that's one. All right. You got to make sure you lay it flat. Okay, so it can stick. That's one. And Mr. Barnes is going to do the other one. This is so cool. I know that we're going to have so much fun with this guitar. Okay. Now, what would be a good strategy if the popsicle sticks do not work? Right? What would be a good strategy? I want you to start thinking about that problem solving, troubleshooting. What would be a good strategy if the popsicles don't work? Think about the materials that we already have. If the glue doesn't work, what else could we put up here that will cause it to stay so we can have our guitar? If you, my friend, said, tape, I knew you were a pundit. I knew you were smart. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Now, once again, we're not concerned about the aesthetics or the looks of our guitar, but notice we'll get to that later. Simply take the pieces of glue along with the popsicle sticks and glue it down. Okay? And allow it to dry. You want it to dry so that it can be firm, specifically when we put on our rubber bands. Now, what I want to do is I'm gonna take either a clear piece of tape, we'll use this one because Mr. Bonner's been using it, and I'm gonna go ahead and probably tape these down just for the sake of, I want to make sure that they stay put, okay? Because I've noticed that this, this tissue box is a little slippery, right? But remember, we want a strong guitar, a guitar that can be held by a rock star like me, you and I, right? So let's go ahead and put this here. Okay. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. So we have our tape down and we're going to let that dry and sit for a couple of minutes. And notice how Mr. Bonner, Bonner, I am already building my guitar. Yours should look similar to mine and it should be strong enough that you can hold it by the paper towel stem. And what's going to happen is soon we're going to put the rubber bands around here and we want to start playing some music people. So it looks like the tape is going to help the glue dry. And Mr. Bonner is going to start taking and finding some rubber bands. Now, for me, what I'm going to learn to do is I want at least four different rubber bands. Now, rubber bands are elastic. You can stretch them, which is going to be important when it comes to sound, because remember, sound is when sound waves are vibrating or caused by an object that is vibrating or moving. So, you know, inside of this, Mr. Bonner has a big rubber band. So we got to have a big one. All right. We can have, what else can we pull up out of here? All right, I like the skinny one. What do you feel about these two? Okay, so I have a big one, have a skinny one. Let's find a medium sized one. Hmm, I like this one. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six rubber bands here, and I have six just in case one doesn't fit which will make it a little bit easier when it's time to build your guitar. Now, if you want to be a person that's creative and a pundit, a person that likes to test the norms, if I were you, I would simply try different types of rubber bands, or you can do all the same different types of sizes and lengths and test to see how that sounds. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the first rubber band and I'm going to fit it over the box like this to try to go ahead and create our sound, all right? So, what we're going to do, Mr. Brown's going to stretch it. Woo! And this is the good thing. Oh, yeah. This is the good thing about having the strong tape up there. Because the tape will help you keep the box firm when it's time to build. Notice how I did that? Right? The popsicle sticks were in a perpendicular direction to the hole and close to the edges. And I wrap the rubber band box lengthwise, okay? So it can rest on top of the popsicle sticks. That's gonna be important, okay? Let's get another one. We wanna see, will it sound different based on the size of the rubber band string? Or will it all sound the same? That's gonna be the cool thing about this experiment. As you can see, Mr. Bonner guitar has come together and I have my four strings here. Now, let's take it one step further in regards to our experiment. 
Are you ready? Let's do it. Now that we have our guitar here, and it looks so cool in its glory and the different designs, I can't wait to see if you customize yours because that's what I'm gonna do when this video and this experiment is over. If you want to take this experiment, let's take a step further to try to actually think about the vibrations and things that were happening in regards to sound, what I want you to think about is this first question right here. What would you think would happen if we changed the size of the hole inside of the tissue box? How do you think that would change the sound? Specifically when we know that sound is created by the vibrations and movement of waves that we can't see from a particular object, which is the rubber band in this experiment. Now, earlier when Mr. Bonner was playing my guitar, let me explain a couple of things to you in regards to further steps. All right, the sound you heard was created by the rubber band, which was vibrating when you plucked it, see? Much like how a real guitar string vibrates when it's played by a musician. As you strum the strings of your guitar and your instrument, you might have noticed you could feel the vibrations of the rubber band traveling through the tissue box, which is proof that sound comes from vibrations. All right, let's go to the next part because I really want to talk to you about how the rubber bands play a really big factor in the sound that you were hearing. As you see, Mr. Bonner, I picked out the big rubber band. The tone that you would hear coming from the guitar because it's big. So it's a thick rubber band, right? Listen to this. Now I want you to notice the difference between the thinner strings. You hear that? Now what you're noticing right now is that thinner strings on your rubber band guitar vibrate more quickly. So we perceive from our ears the vibrations as a higher pitch sound. And this is similar to the strings on a guitar. When you held the rubber band down, the sound changed and eventually there was no sound at all. So what I want you to do is, like I told you earlier, to put your fingers on top of the popsicle sticks and try to do the rubber band. And as you notice, there is no sound. Right? From this, you observe that the sound was created by the rubber band. Okay? When you prevented the rubber band from moving, you couldn't produce the sound. You should have also noticed you could change the pitch of the sound by pressing down on the rubber band. When you press down on the rubber band, the vibrating section of the rubber band got shorter. As a result, the pitch got higher. So if you notice, we hear it here. Now listen to Mr. Bonner put his finger down on the popsicle stick different sounds, right? Now, what I want you to do is we have made a slight mess today with our rubber band guitar. I want you to make sure that you clean up the materials that you have discarded of from the tissue or the plastic that was inside of the box to the rubber bands. I wanna make sure that you discard those in this proper area because we wanna make sure that we take care of our environment because that's the beauty around science. Now, I enjoyed you so much on this home experience today. I wanna to thank you for watching. My name is Michael Bonner, and I hope you check out some more science at home videos from 3M. Have a good day.